Hello and welcome to our service today. As you will see, I have left my dining room and come to All Saints Church today, as a number of you have recently requested a Holy Communion service. So we thought it would be very apt to pick today, Pentecost Sunday, to return to church. However, this service will, thanks to James' editing skills, still have members of the congregation taking part. Apologies to those of you without an order of service in front of you, but I hope you will still enjoy this time of worship. So let us begin. God is spirit. Let, let us, us worship, worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let, let us praise his name together. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord, and we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. As we listen to your word, fill us with your spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your spirit as we long for your empowering. Fill us with your spirit. We're now going to sing our first hymn, very appropriate one for Pentecost. Breathe on me, breath of God, played by Yvonne in her own home. Thank you so much, Yvonne. We've now come to our prayers of penitence. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us where we have gone wrong and sinned and help us to walk from now on in your way. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. 
We now say this week's special prayer, the Collect. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love. And renew the face of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have our two Bible readings. Jane will read the first passage from Acts and Di will read our Gospel passage. They will then be immediately followed by Steve, who's preaching for us today. The reading is taken from Acts, chapter 2, commencing at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Let the one who believes in me drink. As the scriptures has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. 
Now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Those of you who know me well know that I read the Bible metaphorically. I love reading the Bible this way, as I feel God truly opens my eyes with the joy of scripture and the wonder of interpretation. Through interpretation, we can discern God speaking to us today, just as in those days of old. Even though words and expressions can now mean something entirely different. Pentecost Sunday is a day of celebration in any context. It's often called the church's birthday. It is a day when we mark the arrival of the Holy Spirit. Yet how we interpret what the Holy Spirit is can be quite fundamental to our understanding of God and even our faith. If we believe the Holy Spirit is a part of the triune God, as in Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the three in one, we can tumble over the individual natures of God, whilst acknowledging God is in all three. Also, a number of people believe that the Spirit of God has been around since the beginning of time. But before I go down the rabbit hole of trying to describe the Trinitarian God, I move on. Trinity Sunday is next week, so you'll have to wait until then for a more detailed explanation. Our reading from Acts opens up with the affirmation that they, referring to the apostles, had tongues of fire resting upon them, and they then began to speak in other languages. Now for me, this makes me think directly of the Tower of Babel in the book of Genesis when confusion was created through the differing of languages. So from this, I'm led into thinking that the time for confusion has ceased and that from now on, people, namely those having an understanding of the Holy Spirit, would have a more harmonised voice, a clearer understanding of what God has ordained for us. This piece of scripture leaves us with the words, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is an important highlight for me because it directs my understanding of what salvation means. For me, salvation means being aware of the glory of God. And through our interpretation of this piece of scripture, we might discern that salvation lies within the awareness and understanding of what God has ordained for us. A life of flourishing, where we see the best in one another, where we love one another unconditionally as God intends us to, and where we recognise and love the Lord our God with all of our hearts, minds and souls. Therein lies salvation. Our reading from St John's Gospel underlines this belief, for from the words of scripture we read of the living water that flows from a believer's heart. What a beautiful way to describe salvation. It almost epitomises everything that we as humans should be aiming for. A constant stream of love, understanding, compassion. In fact, all of the gifts of the Spirit of God. That is what we should all be aiming for. Our life on earth is a gift. A gift that God has given us. And the more we drink from the living water, the more we see the beauty and the glory of God in everything that we do. This past week, we have been following a journey of discovery as we ask for thy kingdom come. On our YouTube channel, we have sought a number of people's opinions concerning the kingdom and their own interpretation of it. It is a spiritual place, a place of blessing. A place of peace. We live in a physical place where there is also pain, hurt, sadness, fear, self-loathing. I could go on. 
Whereas the kingdom is the place where God is in control, where God weeps with us when we weep, but where God delights with us when we find joy, peace and harmony. When we drink of the living water, our souls are refreshed and we draw spiritual refreshment to enable us to continue our life in this physical realm. We are made aware of the power of the Holy Spirit in our and everyone's lives. And we can rest because we can have a taste of the divine that awaits us in the other place. The place where God is in control rather than the whims and misunderstandings that blight mankind here on earth. So as I draw to a close, my prayer for us all is that we will all become more aware of the, whole, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God in our own life, as well as the life of others. That we will see the power of the Holy Spirit in all of nature, and we will be blessed because of it. And finally, that we live each day as if it were our last. Hand in hand with God, our creator, redeemer and friend. Acknowledging all the beauty of the kingdom that spiritually surrounds us. Amen. I'm delighted that Anne is now going to lead us in our intercessions. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Our response for today's prayers are, Lord, bless your world, and we reply and fill us with your Spirit. We pray for our ministry team, Amanda, Steve, Diana, David and John, and also for our worship leaders and all members of the congregation. Through social media, we have been able to worship in a different way, and we thank God for this and those responsible. We pray for the young people who are looking forward to confirmation at some time in the future, when we can welcome them and all members of All Saints as we come back together in the church. Lord, bless your world and fill us with your spirit. At the beginning of this week, we remember and pray for all schools, especially those where some children will be returning after many weeks. It will be a difficult time for the, all of them, teachers and pupils. We pray, Lord, that in time, with patience and love, all young people will return to their studies. Lord, bless your world and fill us with your spirit. We give thanks, Lord, for the nursing and care given in hospitals and retirement homes by the doctors, nurses, carers, and so many others who work in the health and caring services throughout the world. We thank you, Lord, for their dedication under extremely difficult circumstances. Lord, bless your world and fill us with your spirit. We pray for our world, for the many in need, the persecuted, sick, hungry and poor, and all who are in any sort of danger, especially children subject to domestic and civil violence, and all countries in the world suffering from the coronavirus. We pray for all those working in different countries, searching for a vaccine and medicines to relieve the effects of the virus infection. Lord, bless your world and fill us with your spirit. We pray for our families and friends and those mentioned in our prayer chain. We remember the families of all those bereaved. We give thanks for those recovering from serious illness, especially our friend Betty and Claire's father. Surround them with your love. 
merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Anne. Thank you to both Steve for his message and Anne for her prayers. We now come to the time where we share the peace. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and, as a pledge of what is to come, has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Mm. Peace be with you. We continue with the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is always right to give you thanks, God our creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your son to live among us, Jesus our saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. You send your spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. 
because we all share in one bread. For most of us in this time of pandemic, receiving the bread and wine according to the practice of the Church of England is impossible. This prayer of spiritual communion, taken from the great St Mary's Church, Cambridge, is a beautiful way to remember Jesus and abide in him. Please join in with me as we say together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Come, Holy Spirit, to all baptised in your name, that we may turn to good whatever lies ahead. Give us passion, give us fire, make us transform the world from what it is to what you have created it to be. Amen. Yvonne is now going to play our final hymn, another great Pentecost hymn, and one that I hope will keep you for the rest, keep you singing for the rest of the week. Please join in as we sing, The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free.
Just as Jesus gave his disciples the Great Commission, many churches asked their congregation on Pentecost to promise to carry on that task and tell people about God. That is what we've been doing in Thy Kingdom Come these past 10 days, and what I invite you to do now, to commit to doing as we continue to walk with God. For 50 days, we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the power of, of sin and death. We've proclaimed God's mighty acts, and we've praised that the power that was at work when God's raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of God's church here on the island, or indeed wherever you are, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? By the Spirit's power, we will. Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your heart beats with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? We will. Hold on to those promises and make sure you do them albeit at a social distance at the moment. Thank you again for joining me today. Thank you to Steve, Di, Jane, Anne, and of course, dear Yvonne for their involvement in this service. And for my family for being here with me in the church. It's much appreciated. I wish you a blessed week and pray that you truly feel the Holy Spirit walk with you on your journey wherever that takes you. May the spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. May the spirit who overshadowed the virgin when the eternal son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.